Oh, hey there. How are you doing today? <laughs> I will I will show you how to play Paper Tron by Poom Weeper It. The song was requested by these people. Thank you all so much for your comments. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to play the song. I will first show you the tabs. Then I will explain the strumming pattern and all that in a bit more detail. And how to play the chords and different ways to play the chords to make it a bit easier for you. Then I will also talk a bit about a songwriting technique that he uses in the song. And that will really be that for this video. Check out my Instagram, sometimes you can vote over there which song I do next. Also, I want to give a huge thank you to Colin for becoming a patron on my Patreon page and also a huge thank you to Kaylee for her donation to my PayPal. Thank you so much for your support in this way as well. So that's really everything I wanted to say so far. Feel free to suggest a new song in the comments and I really hope to see you after I've played the song. Oh and also I will play the the live version of this song which is really the same exactly the same as the studio version only there's an extra intro which sounds quite nice so i hope you liked it so the song is just in standard tuning you don't have to use a capo or anything like that so we can go directly into the song
So that was how to play the song. Um, lots of stuff going on. It might go a bit fast. I'm now really slowly going to uh, most of the chords, which are especially the ones of the verse and the intro, since those might be the most difficult. It might look more difficult than it is. I will explain it now in more detail. So, first of all, what he's doing in the beginning isn't too difficult. The, these minor nines. What's nice with this E minor 9 that you can let the E string ring, the, the bass E. So that's that. And you can just freely pick notes. He doesn't, he does it really at random. There's not really that much of an order. Also, he plays with his fingers acoustically. So you, you can do that as well. I like to do it with a pick. He only sometimes really uses his fingers. Most of the time he really uses his fingers as a pick. You could say he's holding his fingers like this and then strumming like that. So it's all up to you. I like to do it with a pick. So I will, <laughs> but that's all up to you. Anyways, so that's that. Nothing too weird going on. But then we go to the verses, which is... Which might really look difficult. And it might be a bit, but I will show you slowly. So I'm saying that the whole time, but now I really will. First of all, you have to use your pinky. The finger positioning of this is really important. So you're really keeping your fi index finger and your pinky at the same snare the whole time at this part. You can also do it with your uh, ri ring finger. I've seen that as well. He doesn't do that, but I've seen some covers where they do that. You can do that, but I really recommend you to not do it like that since it's really more difficult to have control over it. You, you have less space for your middle finger. Especially when you go into this one, it's just really going to be tricky to do that quickly from here over here. Because when you're using your pinky, you have way more flexibility in your index finger than when you're using your ring finger, as you might see me now struggle. So yeah, uh, use your pinky. I really do recommend if it's not possible, then do it with your index finger. But try to, really try to train it, because your pinky is so useful in a lot of songs, and especially Pumbi Pret songs. Okay, so now we get into the strumming pattern, which is really the most difficult, and sounds more difficult than it is. I will play it slowly and then explain it in a bit more detail. So like that. So what he's really doing almost with every chord except for the end is this. So. So he's really strumming this one twice and this one. Strumming this one four times but then at the last strum sliding to the to this G chord again so like that that's really all he's doing and then quickly that's why it looks so difficult but it isn't as difficult as it might look like so this this slide from the this one to this one might be a bit tricky to make it hearable but it's okay if it's not that hearable but it sounds nice we don't worry too much about it so that's really that then when it's going to this one it's really the same only over here he's switching between the, these two instead of these two so that's not too difficult as well This one might be a bit tricky as well, it's the end of, of this part. So he's really doing this. Like that. It's sli he's sliding a lot, so. 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 And then back to. So.
again at the last strum each time he's sliding it so slide and then he's going to the beginning again so I hope this is a bit clear play it slowly again a lot of times I played it slowly a couple of times just a couple of seconds ago <laughs> so you can also even slow that down in the YouTube settings to make it even more clear so that's how we read this the intro and the in-between parts and uh, when you're singing the verses he's in the beginning only doing this and then this what we've seen before but when he's doing this He's sometimes only even playing this note only, sometimes you can hear this one very softly and it's nice to palm mute it, so. Do you do that by using your palm, by pushing it against the snares totally at the end, or totally, like at the end of the snares over here. It might be a bit tricky if you haven't done that much, it's not necessary, you can also do it. Works as well, but that's I think how he does it. So that's that. Then at the end of the verse, yeah, you have this part. So which isn't too difficult. It's only downstroke. So like that. I think that's quite doable. Now what's interesting about these parts, I will talk a bit about that shortly before we go into the chorus uh, strumming pattern, is that he keeps his G note running really this G snare and why does that work and why is it nice you also for example the song Blackbird by the Beatles also have this where they have this melody of uh, two notes to like an interval and in between that having the G note playing the whole time and why does that work so nice it's because it's in the G major scale and of course the G note is very much in the G major scale so that's why it sounds nice and it also that's why it also works a lot with a lot of the chords that he's playing because not every place on this on the guitar sounds nice with this open G note so for example doesn't work but and work very nice with this open G note and that's because they are notes from the G major scale and that's why it sounds nice to play this G note the whole time in these notes because it's in the G major scale and the G is in the G major scale so that's why it's very accessible and very it, it sounds nice with almost all the notes that he's playing because he's playing in the G major scale <laughs> okay I think I made my point but that's interesting to make you notice that if you haven't already you might already have so I'm sorry if you already have now anyways let's get into the chords of the chorus which are really interesting as well again you have this open E playing open G snare playing a lot so the strumming pattern that he's really using most of the time is this quite a make the marco strumming pattern which is really nice it's really mostly bass notes and then sometimes an upstroke so like that Sometimes you play more full chords, so it's less bassy, but you can play around with that. But this is the rhythm, really. So he does the same thing for the E minor 9, which he tends to like a lot. I notice in a lot of his songs, this E minor 9 sounds so nice, I think, personally, because you can also have this open E note ring. Because again, it's an E note in an E minor 9. Because this is the E note, it sounds nice in the E minor 9 because it's an E note. <laughs> Nothing too weird there, so. Yeah, he really tends to, I don't know, really um, make use of those sounds, of those open snares that sound nice in some chords. So, but anyways, then the strumming pattern is the same for the E minor 9, so. And this chord, this very nice chord that you can't hear in the studio version, which is quite weird, I think. It, you, he plays it in the acoustic version and he plays it also live. But this chord isn't in the studio version, which is which is sad because it's a very nice chord to go to the G major 7-2. Like that, so. 
and this chord he plays this one usually less bassy, more full chord so. So and then to the G major seven. So you can just hear this rhythm back at this chord as well, so That's really the most important winner for the chorus. He also switches it up from time to time. I also advise you to do that, but you can just try things out yourself as long as it's in the rhythm. It's totally fine. And one is going to the D9 in this, in the, the choruses, so. It's only downstrokes quite rough downstrokes to make it hearable because what's so nice about this chord is D9 is is that it's the fifth note of the G major scale, the fifth chord really you could say of the G major scale and this D9 really asks for a G. It solves very nicely. It's a bit dissonant so it sounds a bit jazzy and bluesy and ooh, you know where is it going ooh, and then slowly to the G and you might now saying wait he's not going to this chord he isn't he's going to this one but this is also a G only played in a more Beatles Blackbird way which is very nice I'm sure there are lots of art other artists who also have used this chord like that but I think Blackbird is one of the most uh, famous for it uh, and that's totally cool that he also used it in this song oh and what's also important to say to note haha that's a uh, Fun. Um is that when you spin this E minor 9 and also this A minor 9 he tends to enjoy to wiggle his fingers a bit which gives it a bit of a vibrato effect because you can do it like this which is without the wiggling and like this you hear this small and especially here yeah it's nice so you can do that as well he, he does it also in the choruses and also even with the the D9. It's a nice little thing you can do is just to, to wiggle your fingers around a bit when you're playing a chord. It adds some extra spice to it. But yeah, that's really also I, I talked to you about the songwriting thing with the open snares. There are lots of other songs that do this by the way, which are, which usually sound really nice. A lot of times as well the, the open E snares used in this so songs like that. And this also again in, in Beatles Blackbird. So that's really everything I wanted to say. I hope everything was clear. Check out my Instagram and I really hope to see you the next time.